Have you ever heard about an airplane having its maximum allowable takeoff weight being reduced due to the amount of fuel it could carry in the tank? Well, that's what we are going to talk about today. Hello folks, welcome back to the Aircraft Performance channel for another video podcast in English. My name is Thiago Brenner and on this video we're going to talk about fuel tankage. It is not fuel tankering, this is something different. We will address fuel tankering in a later video. Today it's going to be about fuel tankage. And before we begin I'd just like to remember that everything I'm about to tell you here is available to you on this book, the Aircraft Performance Weight and Balance book. It is available to purchase worldwide, either in paper format or digital format. And in digital format, it is sold by Amazon and Apple. Check the link on the description below. Coming back to our main subject here, let's first talk about cars. Let's suppose you live in the northeast of Brazil in a city called Salvador and you want to travel by car to Aracaju. You get your car, you have three quarters of a tank when you begin your journey to Aracaju and once you arrive at your destination, you have one quarter of a tank. Well, you enjoy your stay in Aracaju and you decide to take all your family with you the next time. And you have a vacation, now you have five people on the car and you will repeat the same trip. Five people with all their luggage. If you leave Salvador with the same amount of fuel and drive at the same conditions, you will arrive at Aracaju with the same amount of fuel as well? Well, I guarantee you won't. You will certainly arrive at Aracaju with less fuel than on the previous journey. And why is that? Well, you were heavier, you will spend more fuel. And that's exactly what's going to happen at an airplane. Here's why. When you have an airplane, you have all four forces that we know as weight, lift, drag, and thrust. Well, if the airplane is heavier, it will have to produce more lift. If it is producing more lift, the result of producing more lift is having more drag. And if you have more drag, you will need more thrust. And to have more trust, you will have a higher fuel flow, therefore you will have a lower fuel mileage. You will spend more fuel to drive or to fly the same distance as before. And is this any kind of problem to an airplane? Yes, it is. Let's suppose you have a 737 and you want to fly from Sao Paulo to the Caribbean islands to a city called Punta Cana. Well, is it possible to fly with a 737 a flight that long? Yes, it is, but on certain conditions. Let's suppose you need um, eight hours and a half of fuel endurance to fly this mission, including fuel reserves and alternate fuel. Well, is the airplane capable of giving you eight hours and a half of fuel endurance? Well, let's see. Let's take off with full packs and full cargo and let's see how long we can fly on the main tanks. Well, with the main tanks we can get to this point here. Well, but we have the center tank all empty. Let's put some fuel into the center tank. And putting some fuel into the center tank, now you can get to this point here with all reserves. Still not enough for us to reach Punta Cana. What can we do? As we have previously discussed, a lighter car will burn less fuel. So does an airplane when it is lighter. We can remove some cargo from this airplane. If we remove some cargo for, from this airplane, from the departure moment, it will burn less fuel and now we can get to this point. Still not enough. Now let's remove some passengers and make the airplane even lighter. Removing some passengers, we now can get to this point and removing a little bit more passengers, we can get finally to Punta Cana. Well, you can see that it is possible to fly from Sao Paulo to Punta Cana, but with certain conditions. Is this a bad thing? No, not at all. 
Having your maximum zero fuel weight there in Sao Paulo reduced to accommodate the fuel endurance that you need is something that we call the fuel tankage limited weight. It is in fact a new maximum zero fuel weight, but it has a clear goal. It is to improve your fuel endurance to accomplish a certain mission. Let's take a quick look at a chart here for you to better understand this concept of fuel tankage. At this chart you can see on the y-axis the payload of the airplane and the x-axis is the range of this airplane. When you want to fly a very short route, you can put into the airplane the maximum zero fuel weight, that is the maximum payload there is that the airplane is designed to carry, and you are still able to accomplish this mission. At some point, you will be limited for the maximum takeoff weight of this airplane, in this case, just above 79 tons. But from 28 and 100 miles on, to be able to accomplish this mission that long, you will have to be penalized in payload. Can this airplane fly 3000 miles? Yes, it can. But you will only be able to carry about 140 passengers. And can you fly 3300 miles? Yes, indeed you can. But you will only be able to carry 60 something passengers. And that's a big issue for Qantas, for example, flying the longest flight of the globe, the Sunrise Project. It just closed the deal with Airbus to purchase uh, 12 Airbus A350-1000XLR, but the airplane has a special configuration carrying just over 250 passengers. And that's not an issue of uh, comfort for the passengers and giving them more room space. At least, not just that. It is because the airplane is unable to fly that long a distance with more weight. You can only carry 250 passengers and their luggage. And sometimes not even all their luggage. But that's, that's an issue that Qantas may have addressed with Airbus already. Well, uh, let's talk about opportunities here. We don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. Let's take two different airlines flying the exact same airplane, the Boeing 737-800, Ryanair and Copa Airlines. They have two very different models of business. While Ryanair longest flight is about four hours, maybe five hours, I don't believe they have any flights longer than that and is well within the range of a 737 with full payload. Copa would make some of the longest flights of the 737-800 in the world, flying from Montevideo to Panama City or from Panama City to San Francisco in California. And what's the difference from one airline to the other? Take a look at the seat maps here. From the same airplane, the 737-800, one can seat up to 189 passengers and the other just above 150 passengers. And this is just another business model. If you want to sell every ticket at the very cheapest price, yes, you will have to put the highest amount of passengers inside the airplane. But if you can make a long flight and you can find passengers willing to pay for a business class, for example, you can reduce the amount of passengers in this airplane and still make your business uh, very profitable. So this is not a big deal if you know how to find the passengers to pay for the extra seats you are giving up here on this airplane of Copa Airlines. Summing up to you folks, we have topped our fuel tanks and we're still not able to accomplish our mission. There is still a lack of range or fuel endurance. What will we do to get this fuel endurance or range if we don't have enough room to put more fuel, well, we will reduce our payload and reduce our maximum allowable takeoff weight. Reducing our maximum allowable takeoff weight with this goal of getting more range without putting more fuel. That's because you cannot put more fuel if you have the tanks full into the top. This is known as the fuel tankage 
limited take of weight. Have you enjoyed the content of this video? I bet you did, but let me know in the comment section below. Remember now to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, and activate the notification bell. Here's my social media, follow me there. I see you next time.